So for all of those out there, and it may be yourself that's struggling with an unknown illness, uh, this video is for you. Uh, recently, I've been going through uh, some ups and downs, and uh, a lot of you guys know this already that's, uh, that follows my channel. And uh, I've been dealing with a severe vitamin D deficiency. And I am doing a little better, though, you know, than I was even the last time I did an update. So, you know, it just takes time. Uh, but for those who are certainly looking for answers, um, you know, the best that I can do is to maybe tell you what I've kind of gone through. And uh, maybe it can help uh, you to recognize that you may have this deficiency as well. It's a very common deficiency. To my knowledge, uh, from what I've been able to look up, it's the most common vitamin deficiency uh, in the U.S. Now, I'm not sure about other countries, but it's certainly um, a deficiency that's underdiagnosed and under-tested for sure. That's for sure. And as I speak here, I'm actually in the sun <laughs> trying to get more vitamin D through my skin. Uh, it's so important to to stay on top of this because you don't want to get to the point of where I got that you just crash. Your system crashes. Your body almost stops functioning. And there's different levels of deficiencies and there's different symptoms for sure. Uh, people deal with different levels of vitamin D uh, differently than others. But there are common types of symptoms. And I think that I had very common uh, symptoms for sure. And that included uh, just being tired. That's kind of how it started. There was a few months that I just kind of was just a, a bit tired and didn't have a lot of endurance. I could still do things. I could still drive and do everything I pretty much wanted to do within reason, except when I wanted to get more physical and uh, get the weed eater out or do something physical, like cut a tree down. I, I was really winded and I was tired and I just wanted to kind of sit down or lay down. And uh, I just figured, hey, you know, maybe I'm out of shape, you know, uh, but I kind of didn't think so. I just thought maybe I wasn't getting good sleep or wasn't eating right, even though I, I was feeling like I was getting enough sleep. I was getting seven to eight hours a night and I was eating pretty good, you know, and I've been uh, taking uh, supplements uh, up until like the month before because I ran out of my supplements. Now, I'm the kind of guy that likes to get high quality stuff when it comes from my body, when it comes to my body. And so I was taking some very good multivitamins. The vi multivitamins was from uh, Swanson Multivitamin Company. And uh, it's the type that you take three times a day, you know, once with each meal. And uh, for the most part, there's a lot of nutrients. It's very dense. I was taking the, uh, the whole food version and pretty much has everything you have, uh, you know, a need for, uh, including vitamin D. But I noticed that the vitamin D levels or what was in the vitamin is uh, fairly low. Uh, the other vitamins and nutrients in the, in the supplements I take are, are very good. In fact, pretty high. But it just, when it came to vitamin D, it was kind of low in that supplement. And I'm not sure why. Uh, but I have noticed that when I'm outside, and I'm outside all the time, I'm typically not in direct sunlight. So the, the months leading up to this deficiency crash, if you want to call it, it, there's a lot of reasons of why it happened when I look back. It's pretty obvious, in fact. So I was not getting a lot of direct sunlight. In fact, I was outside, but always under uh, very large shade trees. And uh, I was just always in the shade. And um, so that's a big problem. You got to get out for at least 15 to 30 minutes, depending on where you live, and get some good uh, skin exposure to the sun. Uh, right now, my goal has been to get between 30 minutes to an hour a day of good sun. Now, my doctor says 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the council on vitamin D says 20, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, but I try to get at the minimum 30 minutes. Of course, do not get a burn. You know, don't get sunburn. They say that when you're about halfway to a sunburn, stop. So that's just a heads up. Uh, so I wasn't getting enough sunlight. I wasn't getting it through nutrition in terms of a, of a supplement. 
and also food because I, I just basically over time stopped eating eggs. I'm not against eggs at all, but I just kind of, I, I guess I got tired of eating eggs for so long and I just took a break. And so the month leading up to this deficiency, I wasn't eating eggs. I wasn't eating fish. I normally don't eat fish. Um, I normally don't eat red meat either. That's why possibly that had something to do with it. Um, I'm not what you would call like a hardcore vegan or vegetarian, but I will say that probably 95% of the time I do the uh, vegetarian uh, pretty strong. And uh, there are times I definitely have phases that I do the vegan thing, but I don't try to like label myself as either one. I just try to eat healthy. And so I wasn't getting it through my food or enough of it through my food to be beneficial and to at least maintain, you know, uh, healthy levels of vitamin D in my body. So, yeah, basically it just kind of got to me eventually the deficiency happened. And uh, so I was really tired, didn't have a lot of endurance. And then that led to a crash where basically I just felt like I had the flu. And I experienced the flu-like symptoms. Sometimes it was very intense though. Um, So bad, in fact, that I just couldn't hardly walk. I had a difficult time walking. And I experienced that for about um, five, five and a half weeks of flu-like symptoms. in the first uh, six and a half weeks of this experience. Uh, By week seven, I was actually diagnosed and actually starting treatment, which I'm in the second week. I just started the second week of treatment now, and I feel a lot better. I'm not back to myself. Um, I only have maybe about half the endurance that I did before I got, you know, uh, had the crash, if you will. Uh, but I am coming back. It, it takes a while. It takes at least a few weeks to a few months to really get back, depending on how severely deficient you are and how aggressive you're treating it with your supplements and how much sun you're getting and how much D is in your food and so forth. So basically, it was like flu-like symptoms. I was very weak, extremely fatigued. It didn't matter how much I slept. I tried to sleep in 12, even 14 hours. And when I wake up, I was even more tired than before, which was like a nightmare. Um, I can't really explain this unless you go through it, but it's so much worse than just being tired. Like if you if you worked overtime, for example, at your job and you may have put in, I don't know, 15 to 16 hours. I used to do a lot of double uh, double shifts when I was younger. And so I understand what it's like to be tired. I really do. But this is much worse. This is like much worse than doing a double shift. It's like doing a double shift and then not going to sleep and going back the next day and doing another double shift and and trying to function on the third day. That's basically how I, I feel like it was for me. It was just horrible, horrible. No energy. You can't think clearly. I had tons of brain fog. Uh, I even forgot what my uh, phone number was. I really did. Um, It was kind of more than scary uh, because I was worried that I'd forget other things that were important. And uh, I I would have a hard time recalling things. I had really bad headaches. Uh, My vision was getting kind of weird. Sometimes things would just flip or things would go sideways in my visual field, which totally would throw me off. I'd almost fall to the ground and um, and and couldn't walk because I couldn't really see. and, uh, oh yeah, I, I would get really shaky, uh, tremors, tremors is pretty common. And at night, especially and more so, I think in the morning time, uh, is when I, this happened to me, but I'd get like muscle spasms, uh, muscle spasms that, uh, were pretty strong. It would be more like, um, I guess you could call it like, um, jerking spasms like my shoulder would jerk forward or my leg would kick up things like that and uh, of course they're one of the reasons why I went to the emergency room uh, is because my heart was starting to race really bad uncontrollably for about 20 minutes at a time in different episodes and that scared me to the point that I had to go to the ER you can't play with that Um, so yeah it was just a horrible mess 
uh, some people, when they hear about a vitamin deficiency, they kind of write it off like, oh, you know, that can't be that bad. It's just a vitamin deficiency. Uh, but man, uh, some vitamin deficiencies are pretty hardcore. And so when it comes to like your D deficiencies, your vitamin, uh, I think B12, and also your magnesium deficiencies, they can be really serious. I mean, life threatening, and they can give you some uh, incredible symptoms that you feel like you're going to die. And I did feel like I was dying. Uh, so uh, I'm just trying to make this video to, to console and to give some peace of mind to other people that are going through this. Because it's really scary when you don't have a real formal diagnosis, when you don't have the blood work done uh, to test for, you know, this deficiency. So I would encourage you to do that. But in the meantime, you know, research this. And uh, there's a really high likelihood that if you have those kind of symptoms that I just described, it could be vitamin D deficiency. Of course, it could be other things as well. I'm not a doctor. Uh, you have to, you know, go to someone that can test all this. Uh, but... Uh, that was one of the worst things for me personally was not knowing what was wrong with me and being told by doctors initially, um, especially the first three doctors, that it was either a virus or it was just in my head and I had anxiety problems. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm actually sick. This is this is like I feel very sick. And uh, it wasn't until the fourth doctor until they actually said, hey, let's do some blood work. I'm like, yeah, let's do all the blood work. And I had over 20 blood uh, panels and even urine panels done trying to just eliminate everything. We just got on this on this path of trying to just eliminate everything as possible. Uh, I didn't even care how much it cost at that point. And yes, I did rack up a, a tremendous medical bill. Uh, well, multiple bills, obviously. Um, and that's the problem with the mainstream healthcare system. It's it's broken. I mean, it, it is really broken. I should have never had gone and suffered that many weeks uh, before getting even a, even a diagnosis that was correct. And uh, I shouldn't have had to gone to so many different doctors in different locations to even get help. It, it shouldn't be that that difficult. And so I was, I'm, I'm very disappointed in the medical system. Um, I have excellent health insurance, so no care was denied to me at, at all. And even when I have no, nothing was denied to me, I still couldn't get my needs met to be healthy. So, yeah, when people say, yeah, the healthcare system is totally out of whack here in the U.S., you better believe it. Now, is it better than a lot of other countries? Probably so. But if that's the case, it's really sad to say that. It really is, you know. And what's so sad is that I have to pay these bills to these doctors, you know, that gave me the wrong diagnosis or that refused to even give me a diagnosis. And that's just a real sham. You know, they shouldn't be paid for any of that. So, um, yeah. So, hey, you guys stay strong. You guys that are dealing with this or if you're just feeling really bad, have the strength to to keep pushing forward until you get an answer, until you get the right answer, in fact. And. You know, I feel for, you know, I really do feel for all of you guys. It, it is a horrible thing to go through. And I would have never believed that a vitamin D deficiency was such a hardcore thing to go through. I would have kind of like gone, whatever, you know, I would have been like, it can't be that bad. Uh, it really is that bad. And the thing is, though, that if you don't get this addressed over time, it can lead to a lot of other things that are just as bad or even worse. I mean, you can die from this. You can get cancer and a whole host of other things. Uh, it really messes with your immune system. And uh, uh, luckily, though, my mom, my lab work came out like perfect, except the D. So apparently I, this is, I caught this early enough that it hasn't affected other systems in my body uh, to a large degree. Even though I felt like I was dying, at least my other systems were intact and my immune system was at least really good still. So, man, don't wait too long. When you start feeling this bad and you feel like that you had the flu for more than two weeks in particular, you want to demand answers and demand lab work. And definitely check your vitamin levels, okay? So, hey, once again, you guys be strong. I hope this was helpful on some level. Um, I probably didn't include all my symptoms in this video, but that's pretty much the bulk of them. I do want to say that you can get better. It takes time. Uh, the first two weeks, from what I understand, is kind of the, the bulk of getting back to yourself. Uh, but for most people, it takes around three to six months to get your, your blood levels at uh, an acceptable, healthy level. 
And so, you know, it just takes time. You know, it took time to be deficient, so it takes time to uh, to get out of it. Your body can only absorb so much vitamin D at a time. Uh, the gut is uh, pretty limited on what it can absorb. So if you really want to try to get that up as fast as possible, get out in the sun. Get out in the sun, get some direct sunlight, and do it, you know, in a safe way. Also start eating some foods to help, uh, uh, you know, the absorption. So whatever that your body isn't able to absorb, I've heard studies that say is, uh, that the, whatever vitamin D you introduce to your body uh, through the gut, it can only absorb maybe about one third of it. And, and I'm not sure if this is completely true, but this is just the best that I've been able to find, that the upper limits of absorption in your gut is around uh, 1,500 international units. Once again, I don't know if that's completely correct. That's just the best that I know. And so to actually get that much to absorb, you may have to take anywhere from five to 10,000 international units, okay, of vitamin D3. Make sure you get the D3. Um, and you want to also add some K2, vitamin K2. In particular, it's called the MK7 variant. Uh, that's going to really help you uh, make sure that you don't uh, elevate your calcium levels in your blood too much. And so it kind of helps modulate that and keep it safe. And any excess calcium can be uh, what helps divert to your muscles and your bones when you take the K2, uh, MK7. Also, you want to, for a lot of people, um, when you take a, a large amount of D, uh, D3, it can lower your magnesium levels. And so you want to take a little bit extra magnesium as supplement as well. And also, you want to eat, uh, you know, fatty foods uh, when you are taking your supplements, or at least, let me, let me just rephrase that. It's, uh, it's better for your body in terms of increasing your chances of, of absorbing, absorbing the vitamin D3 when you take fatty foods. And so just eat them with a meal and uh, well, take your vitamin D3 with a meal. And uh, I also want to say that um, vitamin A and vitamin E also help absorb uh, D3. And um, so if you have a really good multivitamin, like the one I take that you know, is three times a day, I just take it with each meal. It has a lot of vitamin A and E. And so it really does help as well get the, uh, the D absorbed. So it's kind of like you can come at this, this problem at different directions, food, supplements, and sun. And you want to get all of those three um, going as soon as possible when you have these symptoms so you can reverse it and get back to normal. So it's, it's a nightmare. It, it's a truly a nightmare. And for a lot of people, it's just like you don't know what's going on. You just know you feel really unwell. It's a general feeling of, of, of uh, uh, not feeling like yourself. Um, you just can't wait to get back to normal. And, and that's how it is for me, too. I just can't wait to get my energy back. And uh, for the most part, my head is clear now. I don't have the headaches. And uh, for the most part, I have energy to get through most of the day pretty efficiently. And I'm already on the, just the second week of recovery or treatment. So I can only imagine in the next few weeks, I probably will be getting pretty close. At least I think I will be to normal. Uh, so I can't wait for that. Um, it's just that uh, what I've noticed for just for me is that when I have the body weakness, it really does affect my, my thighs and uh, my upper body. And I just get fatigued real quick. Uh, I could be doing something pretty simple and just be worn out for the rest of the day. And it can take even as much as two days to recover from a simple, uh, simple type of, um, you know, activity that lasted maybe only 20 minutes or so. So it's, it's a real booger, <laughs> if you want to call it, a booger of a, of a deficiency. And you really don't want to go through this. So as a maintenance uh, type of protocol, I think it would be very beneficial to check this uh, every year, especially um, when you're coming into fall. Uh, for a lot of locations in the world, when we get into fall and winter, uh, our D levels really jump down. They, they start to decline because we're not getting as much sun because we're wearing more clothing. And uh, a lot of people don't supplement. And it's really hard for a lot of people to get enough D through their food because there's not a lot of foods that have D. So you want to be really mindful. If you can't get enough sun, start supplementing. And I think it's just a safe idea anyways to supplement year-round. You may not have to supplement much at all 
during spring and summer. But when it comes to fall and winter, you probably want to do maybe 5,000 international units just as a maintenance dose. And if you do find out that you have a deficiency, you might want to bump it up between a seven to 10,000 international units. So that's just something that I've been doing uh, to get myself back on track. And then after you get your blood work back and it's back in the normal range, you can pull that back down to a maintenance level. And so we all have different needs, though, because some of us are are taller and and wider and heavier. And some of us just have different skin colors. And the reason I say that is that uh, the darker your skin color is, the more difficult it is to get uh, D3 made in your body from the sun. You have to stay out a lot longer than someone with a lighter skin. And so um, there's just a lot of different parameters. You know, your body weight can, can make a big difference on what type of a level of supplement you should take or how much supplement you should take or how much sun you should probably be out in. And so it, it's not so simple, not so simple. I've had to take a crash course on this just in the last few weeks to get my, my, my head wrapped around the whole idea of what I need to do to get better. And so that's what I wish for you, that you get better if you're dealing with this. If you know someone that's dealing with all these symptoms or this type of deficiency, uh, be as supportive as you can because emotionally they're very fragile. Uh, psychologically, they need support. Please don't overwhelm them with a bunch of questions or stress them out. It's like the worst thing you can do. I know for me that was one of the symptoms as well that I was just really easy to get stressed out and to get overwhelmed and to be emotional. Sometimes you just be emotional when you go through this because it's just so overwhelming. Your body is in such a bad space. And um, so uh, once again, I hope this video helped. If you've gone through this, please leave it in the comment section, your experience, if you wish to share it, or if you have any uh, ideas or things that work best for you. Uh, we all have, once again, different, uh, uh, different needs, and uh, we may have had different deficiencies. You know, it could be combinations as well. You know, I found out that there's uh, a lot of the, uh, the vitamin deficiencies can mimic each other. So that's really why it's so important to get a blood test to kind of know where you really stand. And so I, I'm a big uh, supporter now. I never even knew that how important this was before, but I'm a very big supporter at least once a year to get your D levels checked, especially before you go into fall and winter to see it, how well you're set up uh, to deal with uh, less sun. And, uh, and even if you decide, hey, you know, I'm not going to get that checked. Uh, just be mindful of these symptoms. And if you start seeing any of this start to creep up, uh, you might want to at least supplement or get out in the sun more uh, because it's, it's really important to avoid the, this crash that you can have. The crash that I have was just a nightmare. And uh, I just woke up one day and I was just like, okay, this has got to be the flu. This feels so bad. And it was, it was during summer. You got to remember this happened at the end of summer here in 2018. And so I've never had the flu during summer. In fact, it's rare that I even get the flu at all. Maybe once out, of, once out of every four or five years, I might get a mild flu or symptoms like a flu that may last like a day or two. But I typically can just uh, shrug it off, you know, real quick. And it, typically I don't have issues with fevers and flus and nothing like that. Um, even like the common cold that kind of floats around. I'm lucky if it, if it sticks with me maybe 24 hours and then it goes. Um, so for someone like myself that typically isn't sick, this is really hardcore. And I really do feel for those who deal with chronic diseases. I mean, I, I really sympathize with you now more than ever. Like it's, it is just amazing how bad you can feel. And then when you start to feel better, how much it is in contrast. It is just mind blowing. So I really keep everyone in my thoughts and prayers that deal with illnesses. Um, I wish I could just make everything better for everyone on the planet. Uh, that's just not the reality, though. There's just so much suffering. Uh, there's just so much despair. And uh, hopefully this video gives a little bit of hope that things can get better for you. Maybe this at least eliminate the possibility of vitamin D deficiency. Because if you can you know, identify that it, it is a deficiency, it's fixable. It really is fixable. It may take some time, of course, but it is fixable and it's worthwhile. So you guys take care. Thanks for checking the video out. And I'll have another video up hopefully pretty soon.